Good afternoon. This is Ward Harriman, AE6TY, May 1st, 2020. I thought I'd take this opportunity to give you a preview of what's coming in version 17.2 of SimSmith. So 17.2 had two kinds of efforts going into it. The first one is a class of things they think of as visible to most users. There's a few bug fixes, a few features that have been moved around, and quite a bit that's been added. The things that were added, uh, things that were requested by users, some small things, some larger things, I'll mention along the way. I added a lot of uh, information in the underlying analysis in particular, version 17.1, which was not widely distributed, was really working with transmission line models, internals and externals. And 17.2 is really an attempt to expand access to information, which has always been in SimSmith, but it was a little difficult to get to. If we look through the release notes, we'll see that, as I mentioned a moment ago, SimSmith has been extended to include a copper-clad steel model for twin lead or window line. It was largely an academic exercise and a few people have played around with it. It was, it, it was a rewarding experience and I learned a lot of things along the way, but it didn't have a wide user base, so I didn't really bother to release it. Version 17.2 is really aimed at expanding the programmability of SimSmith. There's going to be a follow-on video that talks in much more detail about this. Uh, this is just an overview, so I won't go into too many details. I added some new input mechanisms, buttons and select lists, and in addition to normal text and data parameters that, that are familiar. And I added the ability to control what I call analysis, but it's really sweeping in a general way. Under normal circumstances, SimSmith is pretty responsive, but there are times when it's not, and I tried to address some of those issues. There are some important but uh, easily overlooked changes. Some of these are easily overlooked because our our subconscious expects them to always be there, and when they're not, it can be a little off-putting. The first one was cut and paste. Now, hard as it is to believe after 10 or 12 years of developing code, I never really fixed the problem that you couldn't cut and paste basic parameter value. Another thing was that SimSmith had a nasty tendency to, to run away during long analyses, which are usually a mistake, but it was difficult to avoid them in some cases. And it would run away and it would take a long time to compute and you basically had no indication that it hadn't hung. I have tried to address that issue and I'll show you that in a few minutes. Another thing that happened as I was doing development, and a couple of people have mentioned this to me, you could be working for quite a little while and, and really not notice that you'd made significant changes. And if you just decided to go load another circuit, all those changes were, were basically discarded. You could undo past the breakpoint of loading a new circuit, but that gets to be a little tedious. And so I put in a query which will ask you if you want to save a circuit before you discard whatever edits you might have been doing. It's a little aggressive on asking when you might want to save it. Maybe some changes you made seemed insignificant. It doesn't know what's insignificant. And so if it's not sure, it basically asks you if you want to change it. The two most visible things are probably the addition of a top-level menu item uh, which controls analysis or sweeping, if you will, 
Um, I'll show you how that operates in a minute, but, but the short form of it is, it used to be that SimSmith would run away and do some large computation, and you basically had no clue that it was working, and you had no ability to con tell it to stop working, and about all you could do is get a cup of coffee and wait. The other addition is a thing called a, the symbol table. Here it says editor, but it really should be explorer. It is a read-only mechanism, but it's basically a way to find what data is being computed and how to get at it, and um, in many cases, what the value of that data is at any given point. It's got a rudimentary ability to cut the information that you can discover onto the clipboard for subsequent pasting. I'll show you that, or a subsequent video will show you more of that. So let's take a look at the running menu. Let me bring up SimSmith here. Let's do the comfortable and often overused example. And we'll turn on sweeping here, and it's a short sweep. And so it happens pretty quick, and we can do normal drag and drop or drag tuning here just to see it operate. And under normal circumstances, this works fine. Sometimes we set this to be fairly large. And this can be a little sluggish, but it, it works pretty much as we might expect. Now, there's a parameter inside SimSmith called the normal sweep size and the extended sweep size. And this is usually set small. A few K is usually adequate, and it keeps the response time within reason. A million extended sweep size is really long, and things get slow when you set that sweep size large, not so much because of the computation, but because when it goes to plot the result, it's got to filter through a million uh, data points to figure out which ones are going to be displayed. So let's suppose that we had set this to be fairly large or had a very complicated circuit. Either way, it would take a long time to compute. And you can see when it's going to take a long time to compute, it pops up this progress wheel here and gives you some idea how long it's going to take. And if I don't do anything about this, every time I change a parameter field, it wants to run away and do that extended computation. And again, normally this value right here would be set small enough that this wouldn't be a problem. But I'm trying to demonstrate the kinds of things you might run into. There are times when this is a complicated sweep, multi-dimensional, and it's a pain to go turn this on and off. And so now the running menu item right here can turn off normal sweep computation. So with this stopped and this being read to remind you that it stopped, now we'll see that the changes happen, but no sweep is taking place. This lets me drag tune quickly. And suppose I got things to where I wanted it, but now I want to do a single sweep. And well, I could turn sweeping back on, or I can say do one sweep, and you'll see here it comes, it displays the progress wheel. And a little bit of the display gets, gets displayed here kind of progress on the sweep. And when it's all done and the progress wheel disappears, it displays the whole sweep. And if I move this again because sweeping is not turned on, this trace will disappear. You'll notice here that it becomes quite sluggish. So if I come over here and click on this, it really, it, it, it's not working very well, right? And that's because it had, a, it had a hundred thousand points it was trying to display. Now it doesn't have a sweep running and so this acts normally. And if I go do once again, 
this will come up. If I don't want that to continue, I can abort it. So the, the running menu can be either stopped or running. If it's stopped, you can have it once or you can abort it. And it basically allows you to control or interrupt normal computation. So again, here's a case where it's just taken too long and I don't want it to finish. And I can abort it. Again, it's a little sluggish even in this case, but at least you have some feedback that it's going to take a long time and it gives you some control over um, when that happens. The other thing that I added was this thing called the, the Symbol Table Editor or the Symbol Table Explorer. And the basic idea behind this was to give you the ability to find out what kinds of information is available about your circuit. So I want to set this to be fairly small. Actually, I'll set this to be small. It's usually big enough. And this turns out, let's look inside here. This is a transformer and a ballon. And you can see Here's the coupling constants for it. And I'm really only showing this so you can see what kind of thing we're working with. The symbol table explorer is this little question mark right up here. And if I click or I just hover over this question mark, I'll get a menu that looks like this. If, I, if you'll notice here, I have an L, an A, and a G. And when I bring it up, here's my L, my A, and my G. And if I hover over one of these, I get a menu to the right. This is all the things that are being computed about the L circuit element. So for example, you want to know what the impedance is of the L. This is what its impedance is internally. If I want to see the impedance looking into L, which is dot Z, the voltage across L, um, the current going through L, I can get to all the reverse and all the inverse uh, information, um, and P down here is the power going into it. If I wanted to look, for example, at A, here's all the things inside that roof block, which you can get to. And it's all the normal things of the outside, the current, the voltage, the impedance, the reverse voltage, all these things that you're used to seeing. But if you look down further, you will see, for example, precision. This is the precision, whether it's single or double precision uh, inside the analysis. Um, I can look at, for example, here's all the information that I can find about L2. So if you remember inside, here's L2, and I want to know something about that, I can come up here and I can say inside, inside A, L2, here's the current flowing through it at the analysis point, here's its value, it's 40, the frequency of the Q factor, its location. So you can find all the information that's known about uh, L2. And if you want to use that information in a computation, so for example, I want to be able to determine the current, I want to plot the current going through it. If I click on this point, SimSmith will put the path to this information on the clipboard. So I'm going to click on it. And now, suppose I wanted to say, plot that information. I, it was on the clipboard. I'm going to try paste. There it comes up. And plot doesn't like anything but magnitude. So adding a dot M to the end says plot its magnitude. And if we go over here to the square chart, we'll see here's that item plotted. Now you'll notice that it says root AL2IM. It gives you the absolute path. So root goes to A, goes to L2, goes to I. So that's why it does that. 
Um, it, it's unambiguous and you won't get yourself in trouble. It's a little verbose, but at least it gives you access to it. So the symbol table explorer lets you see all the things that be all the things that you can use either to plot or to compute with and gives you an idea of what information is available about that circuit element. And it gives you some information which you don't normally see. For example, if I do EQU, the equation, what comes up is the net list, which was created by the schematic capture editor and handed to the, the modified nodal analysis or, or SPICE-like uh, solver. And you can see that it's a fairly small net list. It gives you an idea of what the net names are. It gives you an idea of what the values are. You can see here's the equation that I typed into plot. So whatever is in the text region, here you can say K0, K1, and plot. And if you remember, those were down here. So this gives you an idea of what's really happening at the underlying uh, analysis of the circuit. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. 17.2 did a fair amount of work in two basic areas, the analysis or the control of the analysis as we described in the running menu section and what I call parameter unification, which was the folding together of the Anvil programming language data structures and the SimSmith analysis data structures. So there are a few things you might want to watch out for. The first is that there may be times when a sweep or an analysis doesn't take place when it needs to. I tried to get rid of redundant ones and I may have overshot on that effort. There may be times when the image on the screen should be repainted and it isn't repainted. Again, I tried to weed out multiple redundant repaints, but again, I may have overshot. There are some things which you may have learned to do subconsciously that no longer work quite the same way. An example of that might be if you were an extensive user of extended sweeps, things may act a little differently than they did before. I don't know that they do. They work the way my subconscious wants them to work, but yours may be different. And finally, some programs that set variables may have unintended consequences. An example of this might be, I now allow you to set the text in a daemon block from Anvil. You may have accidentally done this in the past and the old Anvil to SimSmith data structure wouldn't allow you to do that. Now it will let you do that. Wrap up of 17.2. It exposes much more of the SimSmith's underlying data structures. It, this includes all of the preferences, all of the hidden feature strings, all those things are now available. It provides better control over circuit analysis, in particular sweeping, and gives you control of when things which traditionally would have just run away, now you have the ability to control them. It provides more intuitive operations, things like cut and paste of text parameters. Everybody always expected this to work. All of you were kind enough not to mention that it didn't. Now it does. Queries for saving after a circuit has been edited. I found that I actually save much more often than I used to and don't find myself saying, wait, 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 I fixed that. And it does substantially improve responsiveness during long sweeps, particularly when you can abort them if you want to. And I think that 17.2 generally improves SimSmith's utility and definitely improves the user experience. Again, this is Ward Harriman. 
A6TY. Thanks for watching. Thanks for using SimSmith. Be safe.